Hi, my name is Max Sutcliffe and I'm a designer at Atelier Studios. I have been for one year and five months now, but I've been designing in Photoshop for seven years, four of which have been specifically focused on digital things like websites, mobile websites, and iPhone apps. Now, I just want to ask you, do you know someone or do you own a smartphone yourself? The answer is probably yes. We walk around with more computing power in our pockets, handbags, or hands than Apollo 11 did when it journeyed to the moon. Websites are constantly downloaded through the air that we breathe and from a variety of places like trains, buses, coffee shops, and we're talking about your websites. So it's vitally important that they look good on these mobile devices and that they're clear to use, clear to follow and clear to read. So how do we achieve that? Primarily through either responsive websites or mobile websites. But what are they? Responsive websites are websites that respond and adapt to a change in resolution, browser size, or screen size. On the left, you see the desktop device. It has the full version of the Mashable website on it, with three columns of content. As you go down to the tablet device, it suddenly narrows down to two, rows, uh, two columns of content. And as you go down to the mobile device, you're left with one column of content. And it achieves this by rearranging the content on the page. It's the same website, but it just adapts to a change in size, which is very different to that of a mobile website. So just to recap on the responsive websites, you have a website that responds and adapts to a change in screen or browser size. It hides and shows and shuffles the content, but is primarily the same site. And of course, as a result of that, you're bound largely by existing styles. Now onto mobile websites. This is the Amazon website as you would see it on a desktop. It's full of content, full of options, but we don't need that many options when it comes to a mobile user. It would be confusing to navigate that on using a phone. So Amazon have created a mobile website which looks like this. It's slimmed down instantly. It looks more like an app. And how do we achieve this? Well, it's because a mobile website is a carbon copy of your existing website, completely separate to manage to edit as you wish. So ultimately you're left with a faster website because although responsive websites hide the content, it's still being loaded. With a mobile website, you can remove that content completely. As a result, it's faster and lighter. So you won't have that, you, faster and lighter. So you won't have to wait as long when you're browsing on your mobile device, which is extremely important to people on the go. You have complete freedom of style. As you may see on this one, you have largely black and white areas, blue text, but ultimately new, no blue, but ultimately no blue navigation. Here you have blue navigation. You have a hint to the deals. You have a prompt to get the Amazon app, which is directly related to people browsing on mobile devices. So in summary, a responsive website may not be the best website for you. It's a buzzword at the moment, it's flying around a lot, and a lot of people are asking for it, but that only leads to a fad. And responsive websites have a place in this world, don't get me wrong, but so do mobile websites, and a mobile website may be better for you and what you need. Examples of uh, good mobile websites would be e-commerce platforms, where you're not aiming to drive the same information to people, but instead cherry-pick how you want this information to be displayed, what information you want to be displayed, and to what users.